In our daily life, you may have noticed a substance being separated from a mixture of other materials. Like tea leaves are separated from the liquid with a strainer while preparing tea and milk or curd is churned to separate the butter. Before we use a substance, we need to separate harmful or non-useful substances that may be mixed with it. Like stones are separated from the rice. Sometimes we separate even useful components. if we need to use them separately like butter from milk it is also used to remove the non useful components from the mixture like tea leaves are separated from the liquid while preparing tea separation is done based on the size and type of the material there are many methods of separation like hand picking threshing winnowing sieving sedimentation decantation filtration and evaporation Hand picking is a method of separation by using hands. It is used to separate slightly larger size impurities like the pieces of dirt, stone, husk from wheat, rice or pulses. Hand picking is a convenient method of separation when the quantity of impurities is not very large. Another method of separation is threshing. It is used to separate grains from the harvested stalks of wheat or rice. In this process stalks are beaten to free the grain seeds sometimes threshing is done with the help of bullocks threshing machines are also used to thresh large quantities of grain sieving is a very simple convenient and time saving process through which the particles of different sizes can be separated from each other with the help of a sieve sieve is a simple device with small pores in it these pores allow finer material to pass through it Impurities which are larger in size do not pass through the filter and collect on the sieve while the finer particles flow through the sieve and can be collected below This method is used to separate bran from flour and sieves are also used in construction sites to remove stones and pebbles from sand Another method of separation is called winnowing It is used to separate husk from grains by wind or by blowing air first the mixture of husk and grain is taken in a winnowing basket the farmer stands at a higher level and let the mixture fall to the ground grains are heavier than husk so these fall almost vertically while the husk is carried away by the wind and forms a separate heap away from the grain take a glass and fill it 3/4 with water add some soil in it and stir it with a spoon let it stand for half an hour as the soil is heavier it settles down at the bottom of the glass this process is called sedimentation now slightly tilt the glass without disturbing the water let the water from the top flow into another glass process of pouring out the upper clear water without disturbing the sediments is called decantation the same principle is used for separating a mixture of two liquids that do not mix with each other for example oil and water from the mixture can be separated by this process to remove the finer impurities another method of separation is used that is called filtration in this process two substances are separated by passing the mixture through a filtering device Normally filter paper is used as a filtering device. Filter paper has very fine pores. During filtration the liquid passes through the filter paper while the insoluble solid remains in it. The process of conversion of water into water vapor is called evaporation. The process of evaporation takes place continuously wherever water is present. As we know Sea water is saline. It contain many salts. One of these salt is the common salt that we use. Salt is obtained from sea water by the process of evaporation. First of all, sea water is collected in shallow pits. Water gets heated up by sunlight and slowly convert into water vapors. Within few days, the water evaporates completely, leaving behind the solid salt. Common salt is obtained from this mixture by purification. Mostly one method is not sufficient to separate different substances present in a mixture. 
In such case, we need to use more than one of these methods. To separate sand and salt from the mixture, first of all, take the mixture in a glass and add some water. Stir it with a spoon and keep it aside. Now, the salt is soluble in water and it disappear and the sand which is heavier settle down at the bottom of the glass. Collect the decanted liquid in another glass. Transfer the liquid in a kettle and close the lid. Put it on flame. Take a metal plate with some ice on it. Hold the plate just above the spout. Water in the kettle convert into water vapor and comes out through the spout. When it comes in contact with the cold metal plate, these water vapor convert into water droplets. This process is called condensation. Whole water evaporates and salt is left behind in the kettle. When some salt is added to water and stirred, the salt disappear and dissolve completely in water. Not all substances dissolve in water like soil and chalk powder. The ability of a substance to dissolve in water is called solubility. The solubility of a substance can be increased by stirring or by heating the solution. Keep adding spoonful of sugar in a glass of water and stir the solution every time. After some time, you will notice sugar grains at the bottom of the glass. This shows that no more sugar can be dissolved and we say that the solution is a saturated solution. A solution in which no more soluble substance can be dissolved at room temperature is called saturated solution. So we have discussed different methods of separating substances. Some of these methods we use in our daily life and some are used in science laboratory. Thank you for watching, don't forget to subscribe.